Throne of Liberty has again started stirring up the world of MMORPG genre. The hype that built up for the Korean release in December 2023 slowly started fading away. And when almost all hope was lost for a global release, after six months of complete silence, Amazon Game Studio decided that it was time. With the announcement of global closed beta tests, MMORPG players have started regaining interest and hype is slowly building up again. But is it too little too late? Did Amazon Games completely miss the window for a global release? Or was it all planned? And could Global Throne and Liberty reshape the MMORPG genre are some of the topics I will be discussing in this video. It is no secret that the MMORPG genre has been very dry in the last few years. Dry in a sense that there is nothing new, nothing different. It's always the same generic recycled and overused crap with a lifespan of 1 to 2 months. And why is that? Are we the players to blame for wanting high quality games that respect our time? Or are the developers and gaming studios to blame for releasing unfinished games just to grab cash? If there's anything that recent years have shown is that the AAA gaming is dead. Being a AAA gaming studio and releasing AAA games used to mean something. Now it's all about using that reputation to get as many sales for a shitty product. MMORPGs are slightly different in a sense where you don't have to pay an obscene amount before playing, as most of them are running on a free to play business model. There is a reason why most current popular MMORPGs are not free to play. It is a complex topic so I'll leave that one for a different video. Making an MMORPG is very complex and requires a lot of time, resources and manpower which a lot of the indie gaming studios don't have. So even if any of these indie game studios come up with a new, originally unique and very revolutionary ideas, it often never reaches the general public. NCSoft on the other hand is a AAA company with decades long experience in developing, releasing and publishing high quality games. They have all the necessary resources and manpower to create original and revolutionary games. But how much more original and revolutionary can a game get in the MMORPG genre? Experimenting with new and original ideas can be very costly if they are not received well by the public. What if being original and revolutionary doesn't mean new and different? What if you could take the best parts, systems and ideas from different MMORPGs and then develop them for your game? Imagine a game with BDO's fast-paced action combat system that has Lost Ark's raiding design mechanics and difficulty, with Guild Wars 2 impressive realm vs realm siege battles, Arcage's economy, trade and housing, Lineage 2 PvP system, New World's crafting and gathering, and the most advanced graphics and sound design. Now that would be a pretty cool game, wouldn't it? NCSoft was able to a certain extent to blend and develop some of these things from other MMORPGs into Throne and Liberty. And it works. Throne and Liberty is by no means a perfect MMORPG, cause perfect simply doesn't exist. But it does bring some different, new and original ideas to various in-game systems and functionalities that haven't been seen in other MMORPGs. For a game that underwent many changes and complete reworks in its 10 year development cycle, to end up looking like it does now shows how complex and how much time, resources and manpower it takes to create a quality MMORPG. In recent years there has been a clear indication that there is a huge gap in the market when it comes to new MMORPG games. Just by going by numbers of concurrent players on release day of New World and Lost Ark is a clear indication of that. Even with other popular older MMORPGs like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy, which to this day have millions of concurrent players, there were still close to a million players wanting to play New World and Lost Ark on release, completely crashing the servers and filling up queue slots. Today these games have lowered to an expected number as every MMORPG is very niche, and with time creates a hardcore fan base that will always play. And that is completely fine and normal. You cannot create a perfect MMORPG that will cater to everyone. Some will like it, some won't and when initial hype on the release day dies down, you are left with a dedicated hardcore and strong player base. Like it or not, Throne of Liberty will be exactly like that. 
It's hard to give every player exactly what they are looking for in an MMORPG, but it's easy for players to find what they like with everything that it has to offer. If you asked 100 MMORPG players, what is the one thing that, for them, defines a true MMORPG experience, you would get 100 different answers. As a matter of fact, I did exactly that. I opened a post on the biggest MMORPG subreddit and asked the community exactly that. And to nobody's surprise, the answers varied from person to person. But the one thing that was mentioned the most was a seamless, populated and active open world. And that is something that NCSoft completely got right with Throne and Liberty. And while it might not be the most original and revolutionary thing, when was the last time in MMORPG that you saw hundreds upon hundreds of players in a town, or killing a world boss, or thousands of players fighting in a castle siege? You haven't because it's hard to make an open world seamless that can hold thousands of players and have your game perform reasonably well without lagging or crashing. It's the bread and butter of Throne and Liberty and one of the main reasons why I'm still hyped about it and haven't given up. Throne and Liberty going with a free to play business model is a good thing and also a bad thing. The good thing is that it has no barrier to entry, meaning it is accessible to a much much wider audience. It allows players who have never played an MMORPG to try it and see if they like the genre, bringing potential new dedicated fans to the game and the genre. On the other hand, the worst thing that free to play model brings is the pay to win. Many, and I mean many players do not understand that a free to play game needs to have a way to make money. Cash shop and battle pass are the most common ways of achieving that. But Throne and Liberty does take it a step further by having a marketplace that only uses premium currency. But it isn't as bad as a vocal minority is making it out to be. The same vocal minority who will without thinking twice, spend $70 on a premium AAA game from EA or Ubisoft with an additional $70 for cosmetics, battle pass and a shitty DLC. NCSoft developers have made it possible for free to play players to progress reasonably fast with many ways of obtaining premium currency by just playing the game. As in every MMORPG game ever in existence, you have two options. Pay real money to progress faster and become stronger, or grind. I played Throne of Liberty since release, I spent no real money, I didn't play 8 hours a day and I was able to have close to perfect gear and stats by the time first castle siege took place. Which made me almost as equal as other players who spent real money. Yes, Throne of Liberty is pay to win. No, it is not as extreme as some other MMORPGs out there. And yes, you can progress, clear endgame content and have fun without spending a dime. Keep in mind, every MMORPG is pay to win. Deal with it. Many people in the MMORPG world are very familiar with NCSoft, their inability to provide quality content and predatory monetization system. It is completely understandable that many players are very skeptical if Throne of Liberty can be a success on the global scale and are very reluctant to even waste time trying the game. Games should be fun, but for games to keep being fun and updated with fun content, the studio needs to make money. The team that is in charge of Throne and Liberty has made great efforts into making it pay to win friendly, if that's even a thing. On top of that, they have shown that they care and listen to the player's feedback. They promptly, within a week or two, fix every annoying game breaking bug, nerf and buff weapons and builds that require it, shut down exploits, hacks and permaban players abusing it. Every few weeks they update the community with future short term roadmaps, everything they have already changed and fixed and everything that will be coming in the future patches. Most recently they found a pretty smart and creative way to deal with botting, which decreased the amount of bots by 80%. For the last 4 months they have shown extreme dedication to the players, community and wanting to make Throne of Liberty as best as it can be according to the feedback. They are very passionate about the game which is something that many players recognize and something that they can respect. Especially in today's gaming industry where player satisfaction is non-existent and short term profits are the primary goal. Amazon being the publisher for the global release is the perfect choice especially after already having experience with publishing Korean MMORPGs. 
They have learned from their mistakes with Lost Ark and I'm sure the Throne of Liberty release will be much smoother. One of the main struggles Amazon had with Lost Ark was rushing into new content too soon and inability to deal with bots. Since closed beta test was announced, it means that Amazon is happy with the implemented measures to combat bots and they don't have to worry about rushing content as the global version will be on the same patch as the latest Korean version when it's ready for release. As I said many times before, Korean Throne of Liberty was the real beta test for global release, which is reinforced by the fact that NCSoft allowed non-Korean residents to play the game with VPN and buying accounts and phone numbers for verification from Korean players. And nobody got banned because of it. The announcement of closed beta test means several things. First, it means that Amazon is confident that the current and future planned content and updates are good enough for the game to be released globally. With closed beta tests, they want to stress test the servers and test pretty much the majority of available content considering the download side for it is over 50 GB. Secondly, they want to gather the feedback from players and see what the general consensus is about the game. Everything is under NDA, so nothing will be available publicly, but Amazon has been in contact with the majority of bigger communities and guilds and often speak with them privately regarding the feedback. Thirdly, if you are following the leak about a potential test and release date that got out publicly a few weeks ago, which for now is true, it could mean that the release date will be somewhere in June or July. This also goes along well with the next big major update and patch in Korea that is supposed to go live in June, which would mean that the global version would be fully up to date to the Korean version. Normally when Amazon does close beta tests, the release date usually happens within the next 3 to 4 months. In my opinion, as long as the translation and localization works, the game is ready to be released. Throne of Liberty is an MMORPG that respects your time. There are no mandatory daily or weekly quests, raids or dungeons. There are no 17 alts you have to play every day. You focus on only one main character. You can play at your own pace, a few hours a day, without feeling the need and pressure of falling behind. The main thing to help with that are milestones. They are time-gated quests that the whole server needs to do before unlocking the next content. It takes about 2 months after release to fully unlock every world boss, dynamic event and riftstone. The combat is also a nice blend of it not being too slow and not too fast, while offering both classic and action mode tap targeting. The seamless open world is, in my opinion, the main selling point of the game. Not many games today can pull off holding a stable frame rate while hundreds and thousands of players appear on the screen at the same time. Being an MMORPG, it was specifically designed around group content and activities. You are, in a way, forced to be part of a guild or have your own group for raids, dungeons, events or PvP. If you are coming to Throne of Liberty expecting a lot of solo content and the ability to progress and enjoy the game solo, don't bother. There are things you will be able to do solo, but the game does not cater to solo playstyles. You will be left behind and gatekept from most of the fun and enjoyable content. Quality PvP was the core principle upon which Throne of Liberty was being built on. I do believe that it is in a somewhat decent spot when it comes to open world PvP, Riftstones and castle sieges. When the game releases globally, arenas, battlegrounds and cross server realm vs realm PvP will be included. This gives a lot of options and content for hardcore PvP players, while the main development focus has been on the PvE side as that was the main preference for the majority of the players. The main problem I personally had which caused me to stop playing was the boring endgame loop. Once you have a fully decked out gear, there isn't much you can progress anymore. In Lost Ark for example, you never stop progressing your character. There is always something you can grind for to make yourself stronger and when you think you are finally done, a new raid that brings out a new tier of gear arrives and you have to start over. For Throne of Liberty to not get boring after 2 months, there needs to be frequent roadmaps showing what is coming, new ways to progress gear pieces and basically something valuable players can grind for. 
Gear progression is currently very simple and easy to max out. And if NCSoft manages to solve this issue before global release, I will be able to say with 100% certainty that Shona Liberty will reshape the MMORPG genre. It won't be a game for everyone, it won't appeal to huge masses, it will be popular and hyped for about 2 months, then it will settle down with its own dedicated hardcore player base like every other MMORPG. If you are a fan of Lineage 2, trust me, Trona Liberty checks out 90% of the things you like in Lineage 2. On top of that, it will be 100% free to play, so it is worth checking it out.